make your protrusive record by placing polyvinyl siloxane bite registration medium on the occlusal surface of the mandibular rim. The maxillary rim should already be in place. Have the patient protrude their mandible at least four to six millimeters. You may want to have practiced this previously before using your material. If you've already created two millimeters of maxillary overjet, this means the patient need only protrude four millimeters to get full six millimeter. Stabilize the rim to make sure the patient doesn't move during the record. Let's think for a moment about what's happening to the condyle as the patient is protruding four to six millimeters. The condyle tries to move forward, but it runs into the glenoid fossa, the red line in this picture. The condyle tries to move forward, the green arrow, but as it does, it runs into the glenoid fossa, and as it moves forward, it has to move downwards as well. This causes the entire back end of the mandible to move away from the maxilla and cause a separation. Let's look on an articulator to see how this condylar guidance or the angle of the glenoid fossa can influence the separation of the mandible and the dentures. Let's start with a very steep condylar ang angulation. Notice here how steep the angle is and notice that the occlusal rims are initially in contact as we push the maxilla backwards on the articulator. Notice the separation that occurs at the very back of the rims. This is the same as the mandible protruding in the patient. Now let's shallow out this angle and see what kind of separation that we get. Notice that as we go into protrusion there is not as much separation in the posterior. This is because the condyle doesn't have to move down as far because the angle is not as steep. If we zero this out so it's almost flat, you'll notice that as we move into protrusion, there is almost no separation of the maxillary and the mandibular rims. When we make a protrusive record, what we are doing with our bite registration material is registering the amount of separation at the back ends of the record bases. There will be only one condylar inclination that will register that amount of separation. In order to record the gap properly and make it as easy as possible to set the condylar inclination, make sure you cover the entire surface of the occlusal rim. Before we seat the protrusive record and set the condylar guidance, we'll set the progressive side shift or the lateral component or the Bennett angle to 15 degrees. It's almost always very close to that. Then loosen the lock for the condylar guidance. In order to seat your protrusive record, you'll have to make sure that the hinge lock is off on your articulator so it can translate. Make sure you have at least four to six millimeters of protrusion, neither too much nor too little. This is a little bit too much. If your bite registration material has squeezed along the sides of the rims, you may find it's easier to set your condylar guidance if you remove that edge that squeezed along the sides of the rims. It'll be easier to see the notches and tell when you're fully seated. To determine the condylar inclinations, we seat the record between the maxillary and mandibular rims and then we rotate the condylar inclinations on both sides of the articulator until there's no gaps left between the rims and the record. You can see here as we wiggle it back and forth we can eliminate all the gaps where we have maximal contact of the rim and the records. That's where we've got the inclination that's similar to what's in the patient's head. Once you've found the condylar inclinations that give maximal contact, lock the condylar guide and record the inclination.